the RTX 3090, 3080, and 3070 were all just announced, and they're way faster than I expected. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So before we go ahead and dive into the specs, let's first talk about the Ampere architecture itself. And I found this very interesting because there were key improvements made in three areas that absolutely needed it. The first being their shaders, which according to NVIDIA, they have two times shader calculations per clock, which they claim adds up to 2.7 times the teraflops. Moving on to the RT cores, here NVIDIA claims that they have two times the ray intersection throughput, which apparently adds up to 1.7 times the RT teraflops. And then finally for the tensor cores, here NVIDIA claims that they have a new tensor core, which apparently adds up to 2.7 times the tensor teraflops. So all of that's well and good and sounds absolutely amazing, but what does this mean for the actual speed? of the RTX 3090, 3080, and 3070. Well, first taking a look at the RTX 3090, here we can see it has a total shader count of 10,496. And I know you're thinking that sounds like a whole lot, and it is because, you know, originally the leaks were pointing towards a GPU that had 5,248 shaders, but if we take into account that each SM now has double the amount of FP32 shaders, well then this 10,496 shader count is technically true. So it's going to be very, very difficult to compare these new cards to the Turing cards that they're replacing since the actual SM layout is much different. Now all of these shaders are running up to 1.7 gigahertz for the boost clock, which may disappoint some, but you have to remember that the boost clock doesn't account for the GPU 2 boost algorithm, which could see these clock speeds running much higher if it's cool enough and getting adequate power. Now, as for the memory configuration, the leaks were accurate and it does have 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X running at 19.5 gigabits per second on a 384-bit bus, resulting in 936 gigabytes per second. Now, moving on to the RTX 3080 here, once again, the doubling of FP32 cores results in a total shader count of 8,700. Now the 3080 will have a boost clock of 1.71 GHz, which again will likely be able to boost much higher under the correct conditions, and the leaks were accurate once again with this GPU having 10 GB of GDDR6X memory running at 19 gigabits per second on a 320-bit bus resulting in 760 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. And finally, I wasn't even expecting this card, but they did actually reveal the RTX 3070 and all of its specs. So as for the shader count, this one with double the FP32 cores comes in at 5,888 shaders. All those shaders run at a clock speed of 1.73 gigahertz for the boost clock. And once again, those leaks were right about the memory and this card has eight gigabytes of GDDR6 running on a 256-bit bus. So this is definitely a mid-range graphics card. But you know what? The prices on these cards aren't really that bad and we'll get into that a little bit later. First, let's go ahead and talk about the performance. So during the presentation, NVIDIA showed a bunch of slides showing that these GPUs could be up to like two times faster, though I'm sure they were referencing with uh, RTX on and DLSS on since there have been major improvements in those areas. But a YouTube channel called Digital Foundry actually got their hands on an RTX 3080 early and ran five different games with benchmarks comparing an RTX 3080 to the RTX 2080 with no ray tracing on and no DLSS. And so in those five games, on average, we saw an increase of 70 25.4% and to my knowledge that's the biggest generational leap I can even remember. They also ran some ray tracing performance and if you want to go see all of their different results you should definitely go watch their whole video but I will tell you about one where in Quake 2 when they compared the RTX 3080 to the RTX 2080 with all of the path tracing enabled they saw a performance increase of 92.3%. So Nvidia wasn't kidding when they were saying that the ray tracing performance had increased substantially. So all of that looks really impressive, but there's one thing we haven't gone over yet, and that's price. So let's go ahead and start off with the RTX 3090 because the price on this card is definitely by far the worst. So looking at the RTX 3090, it does come in at a price of $1,499. Let's call it what it is, $1,500. 
and that that is for the Founders Edition, and I suppose that is the MSRP as well, as far as I know, and it will be releasing on September 24th. Next, let's take a look at the RTX 3080, and here's where things get a little bit more reasonable. In fact, I was pleasantly surprised by this price. So the RTX 3080 comes in at a Founders Edition price of $700, and I believe that's also the MSRP. So there is no Founders Edition tax this time, whereas last time the 2080 came in with an MSRP of $700, but you actually couldn't find it for any less than $800. And that was really a mid-range card, only 8 gigs of RAM, 256-bit bus, and at the time, it was a total total ripoff and a barely any of an improvement over the RTX or sorry the GTX 1080 Ti. So this time around getting a massive average of 75.4% increase as far as Digital Foundry has found out so far. Well you know, for $700, which is $100 less, although that's still very, very expensive for a GPU, that's a huge improvement. And, you know, I'm definitely going to be picking one up so that I can go ahead and do all kinds of tests and overclocking for you because, you know, I think that's going to be some really interesting content. Oh, and the RTX 3080 will be releasing on September 17th, so it's really not that far off. Be sure to stay tuned for all of my RTX 3080 builds where I show you how to build a really nice computer that's ready for an RTX 3080. And I'll be doing one for a 3070 as well. So moving on to the 3070 here, you know, the price on this one isn't that bad either. And you know, $500 for the 3070, which is the MSRP and Founders Edition, is very expensive for a 70 class card, but still, again, it's a huge improvement over what we got last time where the 2070, you know, it wasn't as impressive. And on top of that, you really couldn't find it for any less than $600 on launch. So a big, big improvement here. And this one will be available sometime in October. So, you know, overall, these cards are gonna be a massive leap in performance, especially when it comes to ray tracing. And the fact that the majority of them are actually gonna be cheaper than the 20 series on launch is something that I'm very happy to see for sure. Though, to be honest with you, I think the 3080 and 3070 could be a little bit cheaper. And this has me thinking that NVIDIA believes that Big Navi definitely won't be challenging the RTX 3090 because I don't think they would be charging around $1,500 for that card if they thought that Big Navi was a threat there. But I think they were afraid for the 3070 and 3080 type of performance range because otherwise, I just don't see any reason reason why they would actually technically walk back prices because you know that's just not really Nvidia's thing but either way you know despite the fact that these are still very expensive I'm just glad that it didn't go up in price and instead it went down in price a little bit thank Gaben for that but in any case, that's just what I think. What do you think about the performance and pricing of the 3090, 3080, and 3070? Also, are you going to be buying one of these? I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.